Sometimes I stare into the sunset and I ask myself, how am I going to start this episode? Do you know, Horsey? Have you got any ideas? What about with a magnificent new shop like this one here? I wonder what it sells. I wish there was a way I could know before heading on in here. This is this is amazing, by the way. It's looking wonderful. And I like this. It swaps around and whoop, you can zip up to the top here where the master himself is working on the shop. It's a horn shop. And do you remember last episode, we found a hill full of goats right next to Cub Fan's base? What are the odds that I would bump into him now, eh? Anyway, I don't know where all of these goat horns come from, but they're up for sale. I'm pulling your leg. I'm pulling your leg. And we're starting the episode here because, well, I've been working in the shopping area, but I haven't made any sales. Things have been really quiet lately with most of the hermits at the Gamers Outreach Charity event. So I've not made any sales, but I have been busy moving all of the wall to Wall Street. And this, my friends, requires some context. Do you remember two episodes back, I was blown up by a bed Mumbo had crafted with wool he brought from my shop. We discovered this when hanging out with Zeta. And I cut most of the rest of the footage from that because y'all had seen my sheep farm in the nether already, which I showed Zed. But then that led to another idea as we were discussing what we could do if we put our heads together. Indeed. <laughs> Look at this. Wow, yeah, gotcha. So it just chucks it wherever it can, you take it out of here, and then jobs are good. And wow, what an interesting idea for a farm. I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it's cool, isn't it? And I figured, like, I, th I thought at some point some other hermits who have permits might, like, come up to me and be like, you're already farming it, let's sort something out. But no, no one has yet, so. Interesting. Whenever, well, it, whenever it we is, get the collective is... together, I'm totally down to, to do something. Yeah, I think that's it. And I think when we build our collective shop, it needs to be, I, I think... It needs to be quite a spectacle to look at, right? I think we need to oh, get yeah. the sheep there. We need to get some kind of motion going on. I got we'll, ideas. We'll have, <laughs> we'll have. Oh, have you? Me too. Yeah. <laughs> we'll team up. So, how many permits do you have for wool? I just have the pink and the yellow. Right, and then do you know who else has got got them? We need to figure out who's got what and maybe do some trades. Oh, maybe rough them up a bit. See, see, see if they can hand over their permits. Yeah, with, with a trade. Of rough course. them up. Um, okay, let's rough them up, Zeta. We'll be, we'll be the, well, the uh, wool mafia. <laughs> we'll be the wool mafia, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we'll be the, the wolves, right? The, Ooh, wolves the wolves or something. Yeah. yeah. The wolves of Wall Street. <laughs> ah! Oh, the wool Wall Street. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we could build Wall Street to come and buy your wool. Oh, I love it. That's so good. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. That's great. Well, we will get together, we will finalize these plans, and we will come up with the ultimate wool collective place, and we will make make all the money in the world. And then, and then we will be eating double tall grass, because that's how rich we'll be. Yes, very rich. Very rich. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. Perhaps now you understand that plans are in motion, and so I have moved the wool to a spot behind the alley that has popped up here that is becoming very popular. Oh, even Piggy's come for a visit. Hi, buddy. Yes, this has been extended yet again with another incredible build. As soon as I saw this, though, I knew this was a smallish beans build. Joel just has a particular style with, with details that I noticed, like some of the features here, like those copper blocks and the use of the chains with the grindstones. I, I just I just had a feeling and over here he's selling glowberries and this place just looking gorgeous, isn't it? Now, as you know, I have my eyes on this site over here. This scaffolding represents where we're going to be building our rooted dirt shop in this episode. In fact, I've started putting a little of the detail that's going to go on the outside area. But first of all, I want to show you Wall Street. This is a street right here. Streets tend to connect. We're going to take up this spot down here. This is small. This is temporary. But I've had fun putting it together. So uh, shout out to B-dubs. I just realized I could have right clicked on this sign and copied that block like that. I spent a little bit of time like figuring out what symbol it was. Oh, look, my one's actually like a little bigger than the one B-dubs used. But yeah, this is just symbols and spacing. And it looks so cool. And I think... When we build this up in the future, it'll be big and grand and we'll actually have like a Wall Street that maybe even looks like Wall Street in New York. 
For now, though, it's a simple pop-up stand. I really like like the simplicity, but there's just enough detail here for it to look really cool from when you're standing here in the middle. And of course, all of the different colors of wool are up for sale. Now, I don't have the permit for all of these different colors of walls, but what if I'm not the one who's selling them? As long as I don't take the diamonds out of the barrel for cyan wool or for light blue wool, then I'm good, right? And hopefully this will encourage the other hermits that have permits to come over here and communicate with me and Zed so we can make the wool purchasing area really fun and interesting. Oh, and the prices? I've changed them. We're going for one diamond block for four stacks. Since diamonds are so much easier to get now, I think it'd be really cool to like push for using diamond blocks as the main currency. And so we will do something similar in our rooted dirt shop. I've been thinking like one diamond block for a stack would be pretty good as it's a harder block to obtain. Oh, and I did some more farming. So now we've got almost two barrels full. This could potentially be a lot of profits, but we got to build a shop first, of course. And what I wanted to do with this shop is give a sense of a structure that's been repurposed. So I settled on two individual towers side by side of the same building theme. And then we're going to attach other buildings to it as well. This first tower that's slightly built out of the water is the least interesting of the two. It's kind of the one that has less focus on it. And that's because it's closer to the water. The top of this, though, I built out of bamboo. So along with the brick and the granite, it's complementing texture here for the roof and the bits off the side is the bamboo texture. So this second tower is the one that has more of the detail to it. The front is like a display area where one side has been patched up with fences. But in the other one, we're going to put something interesting. And just above them are a couple of these bamboo rooted dirt flower pots. I'm yet to put the flowers in them, though. Above that, we're going to have a couple of like windows, although they're not going to have anything on display. But I've used some back wall here that's been offset. So it gives it a little sense of depth when you look up to the top. And then, of course, at the very top, we have our bamboo roof. Same design as the other one. And so these two are symmetrical. I think I would say that already it's pretty fitting of the area. It's got a long way to go, but it's what we put in the middle here that's really going to make a difference. And as I said, the idea was that this had been repurposed. And so around the back here, there's like this wooden shack that's been thrown together. This is actually just a staircase to get to the up area where we're going to have a garden built up the top here. Kind of curious. The shop itself, though, is going to be down here in this kind of alleyway area, which we will develop once we put a roof onto this. Then it will really feel like an alleyway. But first... I want to put some flowers in what I'm calling the flower pots. And fortunately, right next door, we have the flower truck. Yes, Pearl is selling some of the ones that I want to use, but don't actually have access to. And I'm a little surprised these ones were not available, which I want to include in my build. You can see they've been used around the area. I thought Pearl was selling them here because I know she's got a sniffer farm to get these flowers. I've found them here at her incredible base. There is like this greenhouse area. And uh, you can see we're on the right path. And just through here is where the sniffers are. I don't think there's any automation to this, though. You just go in and breed them, and the LA picks the stuff up. Anyways, I pinched a few of the seeds, left her some diamonds in a chest from the storage area. And while I've been here, I've just been so inspired. And I've noticed something about Pearl's build style. There are, like, these clear lines and distinctions of color. Like when you look at the elements of the build, it's often like broken down into chunks of color. And then the color just embraces a whole bunch of different shapes. Building is really becoming my thing this season. I, I really got this itch to become a better builder. And we're doing that with our shop here today. And as I leave, these gardens are absolutely gorgeous. Very zen-like, very peaceful. And another truck here. These trucks are fantastic. The best thing I reckon might just be these grindstone wheels. They look so cool. This thing almost looks a little futuristic. Right, here then. It only takes a couple of flowers to make a difference. Some dandelions up here that you can barely see. Our torch flowers and then a few of the blue ones clustered together. You know what? This is like the icing on the cake and we haven't even made the cake yet. So what takes this build to the next level is this block right here. 
the hay bale, which interestingly ties together the red of the bricks and the yellow of the bamboo. For me, this block is what gives that sense of repurposing. It's like a roof that's been popped up, a market roof between a couple of existing structures. So with some wooden support beams and some rails up top to kind of hold this structure together, we can really start to sell this idea, I think. This is, this is the part of the build that ties it all together for me. But there's still a ways to go and a lot that's missing because seeing all of this like open space around it doesn't quite do it justice. So we want to fill out the back area and also have like an up top balcony, which we're going to turn into like a temporary storage area and a little spot where some plants are grown. But this is how we brought it together again with some similar materials you've already seen in the build palette so far. And it's this space right here that is seven wide, enough for the word rooted. And we're going to put in some banners there later on in the style of these other ones in the area. But yes, this is very much the main entrance. And this is the side entrance, which is why it's a little bit narrower. And we have some trapdoors here instead of another bunch of banners saying rooted. Anyways, what you might have spotted is that I've furbished some of the interior down here. We've got the spots where you can go up to the barrels and pick out some of the rooted dirt. And that's just been mirrored on either side. I thought I'd also add a book at some point just explaining that the shop sells rooted dirt. I, I really don't think there's any other information we need to convey, but, you know, it's always a good idea to have something in writing. If we head up the staircase here, though, we can get to the top area, which is much better than when you saw it in the time lapse because it's finished now. We've got a few bits of storage lying around. There's some shrubbery growing going on and then more storage in here. And what I like about this spot is that it feels fitting of this open space here. You can imagine the trap doors being opened up. And of course, this could be like a docking feature where there could be a crane and things could be lifted up from the water down below to the top. But of course, that's no longer in use because this is all being repurposed. So now you understand the story of the build, a repurposed docking area, but the dock is still a part of this little marketplace for rooted dirt that we have constructed. There is this awesome spot here where you can look out over the water. And then off to the side here, we have some spots for boats to come in and unload some stock into the back area here. It is all starting to look very complete and grand, but it is missing one final element. Now, what does every build need? A little bit of shrubbery, some greenery, some bushes, but we're not going for a little bit. We're going for a lot. We're actually going to add like a canopy that comes out over the dock here and goes into the inside area too. And this really is going to be the finishing touch. So first, a few leaves on the inside here to fill out the empty space. Then on the outside, my favorite bit, a big block of leaves that look like they're curated because they're in such a shape. But then we put trapdoors around them to sort of sell a bit of a pagoda-like feel. And then on this side, we've got some overgrown leaves. And this is where we're going to put a few of those flowering bushes at the bottom of some of the leaves just to kind of sell that feeling. And it all comes together remarkably well. The build is pretty much finished at this point. There's just a little something to do out the front. As for now, though, I want to use the free cam, just fly around and show you how cool this looks. This has got to be one of my most favorite builds that I've done in a while. It's looking really cool. We're just going to throw down a few more blocks and an armor stand into this space. There we are, Piglin, holding up some rooted dirt, uh, one of the final touches here. The other one being the sign here, rooted, with an exclamation mark. And it is so typical of me to do something like this. You see, I knew I was going to put in the banners. And of course, rooted, that's seven letters, right? So I made this bit here seven wide. And then I go to put in the banners and I'm like, hang on a second. It's only six letters. What am I going to do? Oh, the solution was an exclamation mark. But there you go. The project is done. There is stock in the barrels. There is a little bit of information right here too. And I am super happy with it. And I'm really looking forward to seeing your comments down below. So let me know what you thought of this one. So heading back to my base, I'm reminded of something that caught my eye. Did it catch your eye? It's probably caught it again right now. What, what is that brightly colored thing back here? It's, it's a diamond tree. I've got my very own diamond tree. 
And I ain't gonna harvest this thing unless I ever need to because it's so darn cool. It's also, I think, about 22 diamond blocks. This is, of course, from Corallus. We waged him a game of pot shop for 10 diamond blocks and uh, the man paid up, like, excessively, though. And here's the dealio. I was actually able to record my very own finger action. Yes, I planted a camera above my mouse and I challenged another hermit to a game. The only thing was, though, I couldn't really convince them to wager any diamond blocks. I am just terrible at doing that sort of thing. So yeah, I tried my very best to convince Hypno, but he didn't take it. He knew something was up, but uh, we did play around and I was able to record this. Like, are you recording with a camera on your hand or something, or...? Correct. Oh. People, keep, people don't believe how fast I can do this. Oh, interesting. Okay, I appear to be recording, so I should be good. I should be good. Okay. All right, ready? Sounds good. Yep. I'm gonna press the button, I'm gonna aim. Okay. Here we go. Oh, I misaimed, which means I can't win. I was looking at the camera. You were looking at the camera? Yeah, I was like trying to make sure it was recording and then I like missed. Hmm, okay, oh, okay. I have no oh, there's idea. there's a crafting table right here. I have no idea how close that was. Is it against the rules to use like a script or something like that to, for I'm this? Not, or, this uh... is why I'm recording. I'm not using a script. I just click oh. fast, you know? Oh, okay. Right, so now, mm. now I've got to like aim and then make sure I'm still like facing this while trying to make sure I'm getting it on camera. This is going to be horrible. Yeah. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Uh-huh. All right. This time, I'm feeling good. Oh, uh -huh. you're fast, man. Woo! That was the closest anyone's come. Oh, why did it go off twice? Dang. I don't Fancy. know. Fancy. Okay, so I'll, I'll be straight up with you. I actually just wrote a script that allows me to <gasps> right click. So oh, <laughs> I cheating. will I will do it for reals this time though. For reals. I <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and you're gonna wager ten diamond blocks, right? I don't know about wagering ten Dang. diamond blocks, but I am very curious I, I need to see to this work, video. I need to work clicking. the innocent angle, don't I? I need to be like, hey, Hypno, have you seen this new game? Oh, yeah, it's exactly oh, right. Click. Oh, my hand's cramping up today. This is going to be bad. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I don't want to wager do. any diamonds. No, no, what, you you want to wager some diamonds? Oh, okay. That's how I need to play it. <laughs> All right. Ready? All right. One more time for a series. This time, I'm not going to use a script. All right. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Here we go. Going to do the clicking again. Oh, I went a little soon. Okay. You're probably still gonna win though. Woo! Yep, With GG. Flying colors. With fly GG. And now I got proof. I got proof. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Yeah, you're oh. a fast click. I tried like uh, doing like a butterfly click or like doing whatever. I don't think my mouse is good for that. Like my mouse wheel gets in the way. My fingers are too big. I don't know. Excuses, yeah. I guess, but. Corrales figured out what it was. It's because I play guitar. And I've since thought about it, and it's like, yeah, the guitar gives me like a lot of strength in my two fingers. Oh. So I can click them really, really fast. I see, I see. Well, cool. That was a lot of fun. It's a cool little game. GG isn't on it? your win. Thank it you. really is. Very simple mechanic. And the fact that it's like a competitive, simple mechanic is uh, definitely what makes it interesting, I think. For sure, for sure. And now I've got evidence as well that I don't cheat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that too. That'll be fun. Yeah, that will be. All right, Hypno, thank you again. Yep. See I'll you see you later, dude. dude. Thanks, bye bye. thanks for the the game. So I don't know if you caught that, but I think my technique even beat his auto clicker. And here's something else that drove me a little mad. I've had some issues of late with audio quality and whatnot. Something I did not expect to my ears. It's like my phone's audio sounds better. So have a listen to this. Right, so now mm -hmm. now I've got to like aim and then make sure I'm still like facing this while trying to make sure I'm getting it on camera. This is going to be horrible. Yeah. Right, so now, mm -hmm. now I've got to like aim and then make sure I'm still like facing this while trying to make sure I'm getting it on camera. This is going to be horrible. Yeah. Right, so now, mm -hmm. now I've got to like aim and then 
make sure I'm still like facing this while trying to make sure I'm getting it on camera. This is going to be horrible. Yeah. So what do you think? What sounds better? I kind of think my phone, of all things, sounds way, way better. But that's just my opinion. So if you've got one, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of it. And with our rooted dirt farm complete and the shop open, we have reached the end of this episode. I hope you've been entertained. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks as always for the support, peeps. And I'll see you soon with another episode of Hermitcraft. Bye-bye.